Oh my gosh, yeah, I mean, to make history with, you know, kind of my favorite people on the planet, my teammates right now, is, it's just unbelievable, so, yeah. What's running through your mind when Cedric's breaking loose and then sprinting at the end of that game, that match? To be honest, um, all that was running through my mind was, oh my gosh, we're going to win, because I back Spiff every day of the week to make that run. She's so fast, she's explosive off the line, and... Yeah, as soon as I saw her break from the line, I was like, wow, we're going to score. And then when she took a long time celebrating before kicking the conversion, I was like, wait, wait, are we going to are we going to win? Are we going to win? So, but yeah, obviously she clutched it out with 4 seconds left on the clock and yeah, just did her thing. So, very proud of her for that. Crazy. One of the I think what's going to be one of the greatest moments of these games was that moment. And a lot of it was the emotion afterwards. I mean, you saw you and you saw your teammates like tears of joy and then you saw Australia and, and it's this sadness. And so you've got this, it's, it's just like a lot of emotions, right? Yeah, I mean, that's, it's the dichotomy of a rugby game is you have people celebrating and, you know, uplifting each other from the win and then you have people commiserating and crying on the field and, you know, I, I like to focus on, on the positive of us winning and crying together because, you know, we were on the other side of that in the semifinal. Um, big loss against New Zealand, uh, which put us in the bronze medal match. So I, we, we know what it's like to be on both sides of that. Um, so, yeah, big respect to Australia. It's all right. You're on the winning side right now. And what do you think this does for women's rugby? I'm, Colorado's a big rugby state. Uh, you've gotten this $4 million donation now out of this win. This is the only good stuff to come out of this for women's rugby. Yeah, I mean, it, it was incredible. Michelle Yang um, donating a, a million dollars a year uh, with really the goal being to up this medal to a gold in 2028. And, yeah, I think what this does is show that all those eight-year-olds in, in Glendale right now practicing touch rugby, uh, you you have the opportunity, you have the chance to be Olympic medalist someday. Uh, and even, you know, our older youth programs in Colorado, we you could be my teammate going into 2028. So I just, yeah, I think it's a huge, just let's get more people into rugby. You're a West Point grad, captain in the Army. Your brother's serving right now. Your dad's a Green Beret. So you've served your country. You represent your country all the time. What does this mean? How does this change the representation of your country now, putting this on your, around your neck? Yeah, I think when I joined the military, I, I never thought I would be joining the military and becoming an Olympian at the same time. I always uh, had a call to serve. And so when... Yeah, when they put this around my neck, I just thought of all of the Army women that I was representing. We're, we're a strong group of individuals, and I just hope I'm making all of them proud right now. You've got some tattoos. I do. So they look great. What are you going to yes. do now? I mean, you're an Olympian. It's a tradition. What are you going to do? Show us, and how's it going to look? Yeah, so I've been keeping this spot on my arm open for the rings, and yeah, definitely getting the rings there, probably an eagle. Probably a bronze, probably Eiffel Tower somewhere, you know, probably just a whole sleeve of Olympic things happening. So, yeah, definitely excited about that. You need an eagle carrying the Eiffel Tower with a bronze medal in its mouth. Exactly. Just there you go. With his wings spread out. There you go. And the Eiffel Tower's got the rings on it. Yeah. Perfect. That sounds perfect to me. Sammy Sullivan, congratulations. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah.